Right, a wrap there of the briefing by uh, Police Minister Bedi Tele, the Provincial Police Commissioner, and Tlantla Mkwanazi. Uh, and this is on that high-profile case uh, that uh, has to do now, we know definitely, uh, with AKA and his friend uh, Dibello uh, Tipsmanswani. And uh, some uh, developments there in the breakthrough, I suppose, in the case of the police uh, being announced there this evening. Uh, a timeline that certainly looks to start from the 6th of March. Remember, this incident happened on the 10th of February, and already by the 6th of March, it looks like uh, the process was beginning to move in terms of the collection of the various exhibits. So the first vehicle would have been uh, discovered on the 6th of March. Uh, the, 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 the firearms would have been discovered on the 22nd of April. Uh, the 23rd of June, they were picking up all the other stuff, the cartridges and so forth, that could be able to link this particular murder to, to other cases that they were investigating. 3rd of August, if I'm correct here, another vehicle would have been discovered. Uh, and then in October 20th and October 23rd, uh, the, the other two vehicles would have been uh, discovered as well. Four vehicles all in all that would have been used uh, in this particular uh, operation. And then we look at the arrest then. 22nd of April, they nabbed the organizer uh, of this. And very important, the organizer. And they're keeping on... On, 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 on emphasizing but that's the coordinator whether it's the man who ordered the hit certainly it is the person who was paying everybody gathering all the resources making sure that this happens in a particular way in a particular order that person left on the 22nd of april 24th of october the spotter was arrested 14th of september uh, the three other suspects were arrested and uh, now the 24th of Feb, which is, of course, what we were discussing a little bit earlier on, the two were discovered uh, in Swaziland. Uh, and uh, there is one or two, I believe, that could uh, certainly still be on the run. That's what we're hearing uh, so far, including other details, final details that I'm sure Linda Missy uh, was listening to. He joins me uh, once again uh, back with me here uh, in the studio. Uh, Linda, so... We were correct then. That's exactly what the briefing was about. Oh, yeah. uh, and a breakthrough in case 85 with six being arrested. Not the two shooters that we see on the video. There are six yeah. who have been involved. Yeah, not just them. Six people arrested. And it's quite interesting um, that the commissioner mentions the arresting strategy uh, that they had to employ here, saying that they first identified the suspects, the people that were involved, and then had to look at some of the cases that they were involved in. And that's what exactly they used to nab them and keep them in custody also confirms what we've been hearing on the ground that there are some people that have been kept in custody right uh, without of course uh, making mention of whether or not uh, they've been there for how long right or even announcing that there are people there um, you know one one of the interesting things about this strategy is that it's quite similar yeah. to the strategy employed in the Senzo Meiwa case right. uh, you know where uh, you know, the accused persons were identified uh, because there, in that particular case, there was uh, a cold case unit, so they did a cold case analysis and they were able um, to identify those people. But in this particular case, one other thing that is also interesting is the issue around the mastermind. Because the motive is unknown, one of the interesting things that I was hoping that the minister would answer was whether or not this mastermind had any links to Keenan because then it would it would somewhat give us an idea of perhaps what the motive is maybe they know they don't want to release at this particular point but it's one of the interesting things that they say that the person who seems to be the mastermind and coordinated everything seems to be the person that also provided firearms and the person that paid everybody yeah. another interesting thing it's it sounds from what they're telling us like it was an elaborate plan because oh. he was spotted and followed from the airport to to the hotel to the restaurant and interestingly the whole idea was to shoot him in the vehicle yeah. but because he stood there speaking to his friends long 
they then executed it in the manner in which we saw on those videos, those videos that made uh, the rounds on that particular day when we woke up to the news that, in fact, he had, he had been killed. Yeah. Let's bring in Nobu Shemadisa, who is live for us uh, out at that uh, venue where they are briefing. Uh, it's the uh, police station there in Guazul Natal. Nobu um umkuzi wengadi. Hope that answered your question. Yes, it did. I mean, it was important for us to get clarity because the language that was used was that uh, there was a coordinator, there were two shooters, there were two spotters, and there was an organizer. And then he then uh, spoke about the fact that the coordinator was responsible for everything. So it was, it was, it was uh, of utmost importance to find out if or not uh, this is the person that indeed ordered the hit or this is, like in, he's saying, um, who is responsible for uh, making sure that uh, the, the, the arms are provided, the money is paid, but they are also reporting to someone else. You heard them also say that the first arrest actually took place in April, with, that, with the most recent ones being the ones that we saw over the weekend. And you heard there, uh, the, the Provincial Police Commissioner also speaking about the fact that um, the, the news that broke uh, from the Times of Eswadini uh, unfortunately made uh, another suspect, a seventh suspect, uh, be alert and is now on the run and uh, they are now uh, looking for that seventh suspect. So uh, a lot of interesting information coming out uh, from this presser. Uh, we were speculating earlier on. We weren't sure. We did give the facts that indeed that uh, this over the past weekend there was that report by the Times of, uh, Times of Eswatini. And my colleagues on the ground here as well just asking, uh, you know, whether this was now done because uh, that particular publication in the kingdom of Eswatini upstaged, uh, you know, um, um, the police here in South Africa, and this is why they are now giving us information, because you know that, as he mentioned, uh, the, uh, the police commissioner was saying that they have been giving us information. In fact, um, the police minister is the one that was insisting that they have been giving us some information, we just haven't been listening. But uh, from here on the ground, when we were speaking to the provincial police commissioner, whenever something would happen, he would then say they cannot give us any information uh, and when they want to give us information, they will call us as they have done today. Nobushe, a question, of course, came up uh, uh, on the quantum, the amount of what was paid. The, the minister saying it's, it's, it's a nominal amount, insignificant, it pales in comparison to a life, especially a life uh, of a high profile individual uh, like uh, AKA. However, they do know that everybody was paid and they were paid an equal amount. Is there any clarity on how that payment would have been made and, and, and how the police would have uh, picked up the, the, that payment and, and are so certain that it was made in equal amounts? Unfortunately, when it came to the issue of rent and cents, um, they wouldn't get into it in detail, as you heard yourself. All he could tell us, as you were mentioning, is that, um, yes, amounts were paid, yes, there were equal amounts, and none of them will amount uh, to somebody's life. He I didn't want to specify, didn't want to give any specifics, uh, uh, referring us to that court case that will take place um, as soon as they have their ducks in the row and the NPA as well. And when we get to uh, also just uh, all, those inf all that information will be coming out of that court case. Case 85 appearing in court, still to be briefed on where, which court it is, but certainly happening on Thursday. certainly happening on Thursday. They cannot confirm which court. We know that uh, four suspects are here. The other two uh, still need to come uh, here but we know that Thursday indeed they will be appearing. They cannot confirm which court it is that uh, that appearance will take place. That clarity again, the, the Nobush, as you mentioned, four are here. Two are still in Swaziland. Was it certainly cleared up as to whether the two who are in Swaziland will also be appearing on Thursday or is that process still going to uh, be maybe a while still? It sounds as if um, that process is taking place um, and that is what they're waiting for before those appearances happen on Thursday. Uh, but it's still, it's still murky on that ground. But I would assume that since we are waiting for those two suspects, that's when we are expecting Thursday to be the date for all six to then appear. All right, Nobushe Modise joining us live from that police briefing there in Durban. Linda Mnis is still with me here in the studio. It's interesting, Linda, what you are bringing up to say, uh, uh, and of course what we're hearing, that this has been pre-planned. 
right? Mm. Uh, and it, it, the, the, the minister is saying it doesn't look like somebody just woke up on that day and decided mm. I have a grudge against AKA and this is what I'm going to do. It looks like it was planned. There were spotters, the vehicles that were hired. This whole process would have been planned. And mm. it would have been planned, particularly coordinated with the concert that was supposed to happen. Mm. And, of course, there's always been a question whether there was a real concert. Mm. Yes, indeed. I mean, what, what was going to, to happen? I mean, uh, there's been a, quite a number of speculation. I mean, if you remember, during the time, there was also uh, talks about how he had previously been told not to come to um, KZN and right. all of those things. Right. And I guess um, this is the right case that will give answers to all the questions that, that we might have in terms of what exactly was the motive and where, you know, um, you know exactly this plan was kind of, um, you know, created. So uh, we're hoping that perhaps uh, they'll give more details because uh, if, if you listen to what the commissioner is also saying, not letting out much about this plan that they have, they seem to know you know how everybody played a role but he's not making any mention around whether or not they've got confessions who gave them this information how they came to discover all these things all he's telling us is when the arrests were made how they were made what uh, could have happened and all of that so it would be interesting to hear exactly how all of those details like the details around how much they were paid yeah. you know like you said how those payments were made was it cash or was it through bank transfers you know so all of those details perhaps will be answered when the case starts very clinical in in in, in how he, he puts it together but also interesting to 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 see that four of the six are actually known criminals. Um, uh, in fact, four of the six have got parallel cases mm -hmm. that they were able to link them to uh, uh, and be able to secure them uh, behind bars uh, so that they can connect that uh, to this uh, particular uh, case at this point. And, 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 and what is, is coming out clearly there, and, and we're hoping, I suppose, uh, with the, uh, uh, the, the details coming out on Thursday, we'll know. But is that this the oldest, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to assume that that is the coordinator, but the oldest person that could have been arrested uh, is 36 years of age. Yeah, another interesting detail, 36 years of age, um, you know, also refusing to answer whether or not this, these, amongst the, the, the suspects, there is perhaps uh, some of them, who, who are appears. famous? Oh, who are famous? Who are famous? Appears. Because I mean, Keenan was was quite a young guy yeah. as well. You know, around that that, that age, age of, yes. of, of 36, yeah. 35. Um, so it, when they appear on, on on Thursday, I think that's when we'll get a sense of uh, what they look like and whether or not any of them are known. What's no longer in question? This was a hit, mm -hmm. one, but it was a hit that was targeting only AKA, and uh, he was meant to be shot in the car, it seems. That's a lot of detail, though, you know, coming from a police commissioner. <laughs> and he just stops at the point of giving us the kind of, yeah. of clear, clear information. But it looks like he's got a whole lot of information there. And you have to ask yourself, so how, how would he have known no. exactly that it was supposed to have been done in the car and the two shooters were impatient yeah. uh, to wait for him because he took a little bit long saying goodbye to his friend. Yeah, and you know, with all this information and all these details, I mean, the, the commissioner had previously said that they were not necessarily briefing the families. I mean, I wonder what it feels like right now for Tibbs' family to hear that the, their son was not the main target, but he just happened to be there. But also for AKA's family, I mean, um, they're probably asking themselves questions right now about who could have wanted our son dead. I mean, uh, what happened? What is the reason? Because uh, they're telling us that the motive is unknown, and which probably is the same message um, that was communicated uh, to their family. Certainly, one can imagine how they're feeling right now, knowing that uh, you know, the, their son's alleged killers um, have, have been arrested. 
the latest, I think it was the 10th of, of February when the anniversary was celebrated at Tony Forbes saying that he is convinced this was a hit mm -hmm. and that a lot of money would have been paid for this hit. And I suppose that sentiment being confirmed now. Yes. Um, you know, and because obviously this is a family that also, um, you know, is out there. They engage people. Um, you, we don't know how he got he got that message or, or that information or even where he got it from. But this is certainly something that confirms, if it was a suspicion from them, confirms that suspicion and the details, you know, around what could have happened. Perhaps they were given much a much more detailed uh, briefing than we were, but certainly does bring them a step closer, perhaps, to getting answers and maybe another step closer to finding closure. Six people uh, would have been arrested, uh, from your knowledge, and how these things work out. What happens on Thursday? On Thursday, it's usually a first appearance. Yeah. So um, what they would do is uh, they would get to court. Basically, the basics, uh, you know, to be told about the charges that they're facing. And it's a day, obviously, to confirm to the court uh, whether or not they have legal representation. If they don't, um, you know, the case would have to be postponed so that they secure legal representation. But also, uh, you know, if any of them wants to apply for bail, it'll also uh, be, 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 yeah. be announced yeah. there. So it's, it's, it's basically going to be a so very short... So are we expecting right? to hear much detail? Because as soon as, of course, you get into the bail application, that's when the vague parts of the case would begin to, to, to emerge. It will also depend on how much preparation the suspects would have had, right? Given the fact that some of them have been in custody uh, perhaps for almost a year now, yeah. and they probably have legal representation because, uh, like the commissioner says, the other cases that they're involved in, they would have probably been informed that they're being pursued for other cases and maybe uh, prepared for, for all of those. So we'll get to hear exactly on the first uh, appearance, what exactly the status of this case is, and whether or not they will apply for bail. And if they apply for bail, perhaps there'll be more information that we hear. Because in a case like this, obviously one can expect that the NPA will oppose bail and they would have to justify uh, why uh, they are opposing bail. Because from what they are telling us, planning to murder someone. Is, is, is a charge of premeditated murder. And in that particular instance, uh, the accused person would have to give exceptional circumstances as to why uh, they need to be released on bail or why it is in the interest of justice that they be released on bail. So the state would also have to come with its own version as to why they're opposing bail. We don't know where it is, but there's a suspicion that it would go to a magistrate's court. If that's yeah. the case, likely to be moved to a higher court. A case of this magnitude. Yeah, at, at a later stage, I mean, once everybody has been, uh, you know, enrolled in this matter, once everybody has been arrested and they, they're satisfied with the people that they've arrested, obviously they'll have to deal with a couple of issues during uh, their appearance that will follow next. And then subsequently when they're done with the investigations and they feel that they're ready to go to trial, this matter will then uh, be transferred to the high court where, of course, there will be the pre-trial proceedings. They'll be furnished with the dockets to look into the evidence uh, that the state is going to use against them in the subsequent trial. If others decide to turn state witness at that particular point, they'll be given an opportunity to engage the state. And perhaps if there is such a thing, they will get to turn state witness. And then those who want to dispute the evidence that is, will be placed by uh, the defense, the state rather, they'll do so in the criminal trial. Inamis, I appreciate you. Thank you very much for staying on and helping us in that conversation. Uh, breaking news uh, this uh, evening, police having a breakthrough in uh, the murder uh, case uh, that involved uh, AKA Kenan Forbes uh, and his uh, friend Dibelo Tibbs Monswat.